Netflix recently released season three of its inexplicably popular drama series, Virgin River. And while I don't quite get the appeal, it just happens to be one of Audrey's favorite shows. Audrey, what is the deal with Virgin River? Okay, guys, I feel like we've talked about this before, but I'm happy to talk about it again. So the description is basically like, a nurse practitioner is seeking a fresh start and she leaves LA to like remote Northern inexplicable California, somewhere beautiful. Um, and you know, all amazingness ensues. Um, but the thing that I wanted to talk about with um, Virgin River is that I noticed something really interesting with this show. And it's that every episode ends with a cliffhanger. And in like most TV shows, it's the season finale leaves you like wanting more so you come back. This is like literally every episode. Either there's like a house exploding, there's a baby dropped on a doorstep, there's a terminal like illness diagnosis, there's, you know, um, gunshots in a bar, um, alcoholism, night terrors, like every single episode ends with something that you're like, oh my God, what? And it is effective because it leads you to keep watching more. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, let everyone know that if you need some stress in your life, um, you should be watching Virgin River because it's great. It's like very wholesome. It has like a Gilmore Girls kind of like vibe and that it's like, you know, nice and not too crazy. But they do throw in like, you know, a little gun violence every once in a while or, you know, um, something to keep you on your toes. But it's just really, really something. Um, so that leads us to TV cliffhangers. And we just wanted to talk a little bit more about those. So who wants to yeah. go next? Wait, who, who was starting? Was it, who, who was starting this I segment? Like, was it, I feel like, yeah, Kayla. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm Kayla. Next. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my, first of all, Abby, I've seen, I've seen the first 20 minutes of Virgin River season one, episode one. So I'm getting there. Okay. I'm, I'm getting to the end of my first cliffhanger. So well, um, Kayla, I'll just so you know, there is that. an episode where somebody drops a baby on a doorstep. Apparently, that's something that happens in this show. Just drops it right on the doorstep. <laughs> oh, it's that kind of Oscar. show. Okay. <laughs> that's what I was like. like <laughs> they drop a baby on the doorstep. They don't place it gently. They... <laughs> I wish I had a ring just now. That would have been hilarious. Okay. All right. So my pick for cliffhangers is Cool Summer. Guys, I, first of all, I love thrillers. I love mystery I love 90s stuff. So this is all three of those things. Um, and the season finale was a, a quite maybe a few weeks ago, um, but it's it was just so memorable. And the series is basically about, you know, it's told over three summers in the 90s and a girl goes missing and another girl mysteriously kind of takes over her life. And so it's going through like 1990, 90, 91, and two or something like that. I don't know. But each episode uncovers a clue about what really happened to the girl who disappeared. And you get to go back in the past and try to piece the clues together. And I love shows like this because at the end of each episode, it you get just a little bit, just a little nugget, and then it's over. And you have to tune in the next week to see what it's about. So it's it's like you're the whole time you're just trying to figure out what happened. So I think these are the some of the best cliffhangers at the end of season one. My theory was correct. I'm not going to say my theory because I don't want to ruin it, but it's, it was correct. But it also, there's more to the story. And now I have to wait another year to see <laughs> what happened. So, Cruel David Summer. and I both watched and loved Cruel Summer as well. Oh. Um, it was so, so good. good. And then as a 90s like kid, the music was so good. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just a small part of yes. the show. But Yes, it was excellent. So good. Yeah, that's I that's one of those like. Think so. <laughs> that's just a really great summer show, as the title would suggest. So if you haven't seen it, like, it's 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 worth your time for sure. I feel like I should have made three other titles, um, unlike kind of similar to Cool Summer. We can guess what the title was. So so <laughs> you could guess. That sounds like a Lifetime movie network movie. They'd all be <laughs> Banana Rama <laughs> songs. 
Um, so Gordon, what is what is your most memorable uh, cliffhanger? I went really obscure uh, with mine, so I'll have a lot of explaining to do. It's a little show called uh, The Office, which was a, uh, a, a an office comedy uh, that was used to be on NBC. Uh, and basically, they were really good at their cliffhangers. I was a big uh, PB and J guy, uh, Pam Beasley and Jim. Uh, will they? Won't they ever get together? And uh, I was actually talking to David about this earlier today, and he wanted to know if my cliffhanger was the, was he might've picked a better one than I had, which was at the end of casino night when uh, Pam and Jim finally kiss, and then who knows what's gonna happen. But I went with a little happier of a cliffhanger the following season. Uh, Jim, uh, Pam has ended her engagement. Uh, Jim is now dating uh, somebody else. Uh, he goes off to New York to try to get a new job. And Pam's explaining why she's happy for him and why she you know, wishes the best for his future. Uh, and then you find out he bailed on the job interview. He comes back, asks her out to dinner, and she says yes. And probably the only cliffhanger that had me jumping out of my chair and dancing around my living room. So um, in, for, in that instance, for those two, it was nothing but romance. Uh, they were clearly both in the need of love. Um, and love is better in the <laughs> office. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. I love the office. You know, That's actually a really when, good one. Yeah, I, 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 I I'm not exaggerating. I was him. like, I was just so happy that they had finally pulled the trigger on that one, and those two were getting together. And Jenna Fisher plays it so well because he says it's a date, and it cuts back to her, and she has like the watery eyes, like her her joy in that moment. Like you, you felt that. Um, and I think honestly, like The Office is one of those shows where when the will they won't they Sam and Diane couple finally got together, it didn't get worse. It got worse for other reasons, but not because sure. they got together. Well, and they, they, they yeah. like every time, like, you know, uh, a good example is Friends is Ross and Rachel, they kept bringing them back together uh, with 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 uh, Pam and Jim. They kept doing things that made you think they were going to break them up. Like Jim bought a house without telling her or Pam went to New York and, and met a guy that she was friends with. All these things that could have should have torn them apart in a traditional sitcom uh, didn't have that effect because their relationship was that strong, which I always liked because if they broke them up, I would have cried for the rest of my life. That no good cameraman or boom boom yeah. boom operator. Don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> what a. I, I, what I a don't jerk. watch those episodes just like I don't watch when they try to get Joey and Rachel together on Friends. Won't watch them. <laughs> yes. They don't exist in my in my canon. Those episodes don't exist. I don't watch them either. <laughs> um, all right, my my cliffhanger episode. So. During the Simpsons sixth season in 1994 and 1995, the show was at the height of its popularity, netting anywhere from 11 to 22 million viewers per episode. For comparison, just over 19 million viewers watched the Game of Thrones series finale. So the Treehouse of Horror episode in 94 did more viewers than that. Um, and so on May 21st, 1995, at the end of the season six finale, The Simpsons appeared to kill off one of its main characters when an unknown assailant shot lovable power plant owner C. Montgomery Burns for trying to block the sun from shining on Springfield. Now, everyone was a suspect. Homer, Bart, Lisa, Smithers, Skinner, Moe, Barney, Grandpa, Groundskeeper Willie, Lunch Lady Doris, Tito Puente. Fox even ran a contest over the summer of 1995 where you could write in and guess the shooter for a chance to be animated into a Simpsons episode. So we waited four long months to find out who shot Mr. Burns. And in the end, it was the Simpsons iconic toddler, Maggie Simpson, who shot the billionaire when his own gun slipped from his pocket during a struggle for Maggie's lollipop. The gun went off striking Mr. Burns, and as he fell onto the sundial, he pointed to the symbols for West and South, which from his point of view looked like a M and an S, the initials for Maggie Simpson. Wow. And that was Who Shot Mr. Burns. Wow. Quite the synopsis. Wow. That was, that was yes. an amazing synopsis. <laughs> you cannot I was actually compare. gonna, I was like, I was gonna guess that, the toddler. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, of course. Of course it was. David, you cannot compare the ratings from a primetime show in the 90s to a premium show 
from the, the tw 2010s. There was like one network back in the 90s. That <laughs> people had nothing else to watch. It was the only show on. No. <laughs> well, I mean, like, The Simpsons now is doing barely like 1 million viewers per episode, even for the Treehouse of Horror episode. So it's a, I mean, yeah, there's more TV. There's more TV to watch. Video games, but it's a... social media, the internet, <laughs> rocket ships. But imagining more people tuning in for an episode of The Simpsons than they did Holy for moly. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, Holy it, it is amazing. It's just, but it's not because, <laughs> that, that, like, it's like there's just too much these days. Is, do I sound there. old? Is that, that's what I'm going for. Have we gotten to that point? <laughs> just stirring the pot. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting yeah. there. old jokes. I was I was thinking of another um, another uh, since I already talked about um, Fridays and Saturday nights and and being on my own and when I was much younger my we used to get a babysitter and I remember my babysitter watching the Beverly Hills 90210 episode where Rebecca Gayhart gets shot by her by uh, her boyfriend's dad because they think it's Dylan or Brandon I can't remember which one. And I remember my babysitter sitting down on the couch, sobbing, crying. And my sister and I snuck Aww. out and we're looking down the steps and, and watched that moment unfold as he's holding her and she's laying there on the pavement. And I don't know if that was a cliffhanger. It was just like a really awful finale. Heartbreaking. <laughs> it was. That I wasn't allowed to watch Beverly Hills as a kid, but I watched it later in life. Um, and I do remember that. And that was very sad. She was like, it was like in the alley, like outside of something, right? Like next to a car. Yeah. Yeah. They Like they were driving and it was, uh, I think they had maybe just gotten married and her dad was in the mob and he didn't approve mm. of the relationship. Yeah. You know, just <sighs> way to bring it down. That's classic. That's 902. Classic. Classic, yeah. classic. It's the way love goes. Um, before we head out for the week, um, wait, what, what, do I have to, you want to check out, you know, more finales and, and all that? Just say what to watch. Oh.